On the outside, it may look like any other historic home in this North Denver neighborhood. This is the basement. But inside, wow, the secrets of a gangster's paradise. Here goes nothing. Are finally revealed. There was a, a full wall here. When Matt Feeney bought his 1891 building. Victorian on Osage Street, it needed some TLC. So he started to knock out the walls and the walls started to talk. So as we're knocking it out, um, hitting it right here, we're smelling matches as if they've, you know, being constantly lit. Feeney says buried in plaster, he discovered a row of matches. Ended up following uh, what I'm calling a fuse. It went behind the cabinets and it led to these canvas packets taped up against the wall. Matches, fuses, okay. newspapers. Feeney feels his new residence was rigged. So you think this house was booby trapped? I do. I think that might have just been a way for them to quickly make a distraction. See, Feeney found out the first homeowners here were Denver's most infamous connection to the mob. They were great for selling papers. Former Denver Post columnist Dick Kreck wrote the book on the Small Doan family, which basically ran the city's underground gambling from the 30s through the 70s. They were sort of B-level gangsters. But I always tell people we still love them today because they were our gangsters. Gangsters who needed a hideaway. Yeah, I had to redo some foundation footers on the back half of the house. And before long, Feeney found that too in the cellar. It's like they almost tried to stucco over the entrance to it. And we started chiseling away and, and found the little seam. The bolted door finally opened leads to a hidden chamber empty now, but once filled with secrets. Okay, so I'm inside this room where Denver's most notorious crime family kept things hidden that they didn't want to be found. And I, what I see are two concrete walls here. The house is back this way. And then there's a dirt wall here where Matt, the homeowner, thinks at one point there may have been a tunnel so you could get out. This is my grandma and this is my grandpa. The house belonged to 82-year-old Eugene Smaldone's grandparents. The story goes that once during Prohibition, police raided it and found the liquor, but his father and uncle took the rap. The Sopranos, nothing like that. <laughs> nothing at all. And while Smaldone doesn't believe anyone booby-trapped the house to burn, Kreck says during that time there were a series of unsolved murders, almost all to the advantage of the Smaldone family. I don't think you stayed in power for 40 years being nice guys. Not in that business. So far, though, Feeney says he hasn't found any evidence of foul play, only photos and letters and a bottle of poison. It's cool, huh? If only these walls could really talk. Jacqueline Allen, 7 News.